In this video, I'm going to be reviewing some geometry and trigonometry. I want to note that in Appendix A of Night 4E, there are some mathematical equations that you might want to reference. But in general, if you feel like your algebra, geometry, or trigonometry skills are very shaky, you probably want to seek out some additional tutoring at the uh, Resource Center or some additional materials to work on that. Just as in a philosophy class or a history class, you need to do a lot of reading and writing to get the material that's actually history and philosophy. Similarly here, when you're working on physics problem solving, the physics is the most important thing, but the math is a tool that you're using along the way. So it's really important that you have uh, some comfort with those skills. The first thing that I want to start with are triangles. So note that here I have a triangle. One of the things that's true for all triangles, not just right triangles, is that the inner angles sum to 180 degrees. So if I know what two of the angles are, I can find what the third angle is. So that's true for all triangles. Now, one notation thing is that you want to denote what right angles are with a little box. And in particular, I point this out because when I go to draw a triangle, I never do a really great job. So that looks reasonably like a right triangle, but by drawing that box I can make it clear that it's definitely a right triangle. One thing that I struggle with is really making things not look like a 45 degree, 45 degree triangle, like this does. So pretty much all of my triangles will look like one of these two. So that's one reason why you probably want to label the angles, because maybe I'll say that this is a 75 degree angle and this is a 15 degree angle. It doesn't actually look like it, but by labeling it you know that that's what I was trying to do. Now in this case, maybe I will say that this is a 40 degree angle and this is a 50 degree angle, and that certainly doesn't look like it, but that was the best that I could do drawing. Note that these add to 90, and that's because all of them must add to 180, and the box tells you that that's 90 degrees. Now in general, we're only going to be talking about right triangles because they have special properties that relate largely to trigonometry. And in general, that's what we care about. So be careful because there might be a scenario where you have some weird triangle like this that is not a right triangle. You'll need to think carefully before doing any math with that since your trig tools aren't going to work just straight out of the box with it. So most of the time when we talk about degrees in just normal life, we probably use degrees to talk about our angles. Maybe degrees or temperature as well. But so if I want to talk about an angle just with someone who isn't a physicist, I'll probably talk about it as 30 degrees or 60 degrees and think that they know what I'm talking about. But in physics, we actually are going to use radians more often. Now you can write radians as the whole word or as RAD. These two things are completely equivalent. Now the idea of radians is really coming from the geometry of circles themselves. That 2 pi is your 360 degrees. In other words, 2 pi is your whole circle. And hopefully you remember that you can calculate circumference by 2 pi times the radius. So 2 pi radians. So there's a lot of math that really simplifies if you use radians and you can't actually do it the same way if you do degrees. So in physics, frequently we want to use radians, especially when talking about circles. Now what this means is that when we have a right angle, that's going to be pi over 2 radians. And again, that's what you normally call 90 degrees. Now you'll see radians a lot more when we get to uh, circles, but one thing that I want to point out right now is if you're using a scientific calculator, it might, when you, for instance, say cosine of something, expect degrees or radians. It's one or the other. So make sure that you understand your calculator and how to select degrees mode versus radians mode. And similarly, if you ask for the inverse sine of something, it's going to be telling you that answer either in radians or in degrees. If you go, you can actually do trigonometry just on the command line of Google. And again, Google defaults to radians. So if you want it degrees, you have to explicitly say so. Now, one thing about uh, radians is that most of us don't just know the fractional representations of radians off the top of our head. 
most of us have a better feel for decimals, and that's okay. So in my head, I know roughly what 60 degrees looks like. Now, you can figure that out what that would be in radians by remembering that a whole circle is 2 pi, and 60 degrees is 1 sixth of a whole circle. So that's 2 pi divided by 6, and I could actually factor out a 2 and get pi over 3. So if you tell me that an angle is pi over 3, I know that that is 60 degrees. Now if what you actually write on your paper is 1.0472, maybe you give me more decimal places, who knows, I can't actually look at that and know that that's a 60 degree angle. I just can't do that. Now where this actually comes in is if you're doing a calculation and you have some big calculation you've put into Google and it spits out a, an angle that is equal to say 1.5708 and again it'd be more decimal places than that. You might want to look at your math and try to figure out if there's a nice way to simplify it down, that big calculation, because this is actually equal to pi over 2. And the reason that that matters is that's a 90 degree angle. If you're calculating an angle of something and you get 90 degrees, you should have been able to figure that out from a picture rather than a calculation. So please be careful. And the other reason that this matters is that if I, for instance, take the cosine of 90, I get 0. If I take the cosine of 1.57, I'm not exactly going to get 0. So that's another reason to try to use these exact representations. You know, if I say cosine of 90 degrees, that equals 0. Cosine of pi over 2, which is exactly equal, should again equal 0. But once you have that decimal representation, you're going to round it. That's okay. That's not exactly equal to zero. So it's not equal to zero. So please be careful about rounding when working with radians, since it will introduce other mistakes into your work. There's one other little kind of miscellaneous thing from geometry. You probably learned this at one point, but maybe you haven't used it since you learned it. Maybe that was three or four or five years ago. And I frequently refer to this as seeing a Z. Now, when I look on the page right now, it's technically, I guess, a backward Z. But what's important to know is that this line, this top line, is parallel to this line. These are parallel, and I think that's the way you technically represent it. What that means is that this angle is the same as that angle. Those are equal. And that will help if you know what one of them is, but you're trying to find the other. This is something that's actually going to come up a lot in physics when we're dealing with forces. Let me try to quickly talk you through a scenario where you might see this. I know that this is going to be a little confusing because we haven't gotten to this in class at all yet, but one of the challenges is that we need to build a good foundation so that when we get to it, it makes sense. In this case, I have a ramp that makes angle theta with respect to the horizontal. So we would call this horizontal direction x and this up direction y. And my notation here might not be very clear right now to you, but there will be later vis uh, videos that introduce this more clearly. So I have a box on a ramp. It is theoretically a square box, but I'm very bad at drawing. And there is a force that we will call the normal force acting on this box. Now, this normal force is actually perpendicular to this surface. And what we might want to do is break the normal force into x and y components. So now this is something that is tricky all of the time because, again, I'm really bad at drawing. You might be better. One of these angles, right, there's two angles here. One of these angles is theta. One of them is not, right? So I have this angle and then I have this angle. They're different, unless, of course, this is a 45-degree triangle. So one of them is theta, one of them is not. We have to figure out which one is which. So there's a few ways to do this, but this is one of the ways that I like using the Z trick. And again, that's what I call this. There's a few different approaches here. We will come back to this when we're doing problems like this. But right now I want to talk you through briefly how to think about it.
Now there are again different approaches to doing this, but I'm going to trace this out as, again as z, though it's tilted this way. And so what that means, and I'll try to use a different color, is that this angle is equal to this angle, right? Since those are the same. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. This angle, these two in green, are not equal to theta, right? This is equal to 90 minus theta because I've, I have a, a right triangle here. So, and again, there's different approaches here if you feel like this one doesn't make a lot of sense to you. If we know that this angle is now 90 minus theta, you can do a couple of things. One is to look at this 90 degree angle and note that if this is 90 minus theta, then the other part of our 90 degree angle, which is this one, is going to be equal to theta. So this approach might make sense as I talk you through it, but it might be difficult to replicate on your own. And I know that once you come to a diagram like this, it's fairly unclear. So I'd like to show you one more geometry rule that hopefully you've learned about before, and then how we can apply it to the same situation. So originally I was talking about the Z technique for finding similar angles, and in this case it's an X. And we know that this angle, assume that these are straight lines, is the same as this one, but these other two angles are then equal to each other. And this is true no matter how your X is shaped, as long as your lines are straight. So what that means is if you can find an X in your figure, then you can use this technique. So now again, the goal is to figure out which one of these is theta. And so what we need to remember is again, the two sets of coordinates we're working with, we have our, our X and Y, representing our horizontal lines and our vertical lines, but then the other coordinate system we can be working with here is the parallel direction and the perpendicular direction. Again, if this notation is new to you, it will be talked about more in a later video. So I've gone ahead and drawn an X. So this is for one of the thetas, and again, the goal is to figure out if this is theta, sorry, one of the angles, is this theta or not theta? So note, that in doing so, I now have a new triangle. This angle is 90 minus theta. And note now that I have a z. So this is 90 minus theta. And note that that was part of my x. So since the other half of my x is 90 minus theta, and it's part of a right angle here, this is again theta. So that was what I got when I drew an X involving the angle that was not theta. I've now briefly redrawn that with a different X, which is now on the other angle. And in this case, we again see that I have a new right triangle. And make sure always to identify the right triangle here. And so this angle here is not theta i.e. it is going to be 90 minus theta. Now, that was the triangle outlined in black. I'm now going to outline a triangle in green, which has its right angle here at the bottom, but it still has this 90 minus theta, which means this top corner is theta. And since that corner is theta, that means in our x, this is theta. So I've shown you three different techniques for proving that this angle is theta. I don't know which one of these you found most clear. And in all cases, keep in mind that the work looks pretty messy at the end. But do make sure you go through one of these processes to identify when you're breaking a vector into components like this, which one's theta. And again, typically the two shapes that you're using to say that you have similar angles are these X shapes and these Z shapes.